Ask Don't Tell is dead, we have the ensuing reaction. Then, a new addition to University Boulevard as Walmart comes to Moon Township. And the threat of government shutdown looms once again, but will it happen? All this and more as RMU Live starts now. Your headlines, your campus, your voice. Presented by RMU students for RMU students. Join us as RMU Live begins now. Tuesday marked the end of the military's don't ask, don't tell policy. President Obama signed a repeal of the law in December of last year, but the Pentagon held off on officially doing away with it until new rules and new training were put in place. For 18 years, the law banned gays and lesbians from serving openly in the military. The advocacy group Service Members Legal Defense Network estimates more than 14,000 people were kicked out of the military because of the law. Many of them are already looking to re-enlist. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Beginski. And I'm Andre Steed. Welcome to RMU Live for Wednesday, September 21st, 2011. For some gay service members, coming out didn't just mean revealing their sexual orientation to comrades in arms. It also meant coming out to loved ones and parents. Jeannie Moose has that story. For months, he was the headless soldier, identity withheld, and then in one nerve-wracking phone call... Kind of call that makes you exhale. This gay soldier stationed in Germany hey, Daddy. came out to his father in Alabama. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Will you love me? Period. Yes. He had waited till the moment that the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell officially went into effect. Dad, I'm gay. Okay. Like, always have been. I've known since forever. I, I mean, I didn't want you to find out any other way. Okay. After two low-key okays, we still didn't know how his father really felt. You still love me? I still love you, son. You okay, Ted? Okay, our relationship. What had changed was the 21-year-old soldier's relationship with himself. He started using YouTube as a way to gradually come out. For months, this is how he showed himself in videos, mostly from the neck down, never revealing his face. In video after video, he documented his coming out process. I told my girlfriend, and hardest, hardest thing I've ever done. But even on Facebook, he hid his face, even hid behind his beer. When he came out to a soldier friend, he put that on YouTube. I'm gay. Is it? Okay. I could give a rat's ass. Hey, love is love. Love is love, but tell that to your dad. I thought he was going to be hurt. Um, my dad only has, has one son, and it's me. Air Force Airman Randy Phillips told us it went better than he'd expected. Well, my son. Yes, sir. Oh, my Lord. Wait a minute, Randy. Not so fast. There is one other matter. You want to tell Mom for me? <laughs> I don't believe so. When Randy called his mother... It was just a lot of silence. But Randy says at least she wasn't angry. His parents didn't ask, but he did tell. It's great to see your head finally. Finally, the headless soldier has a head, and his dad didn't bite it off. Dad, I'm gay. Genie Mose, CNN. You still love me? I still love you, son. New York. Not only can troops now come out, but just like all other troops, gays and lesbians will be able to designate anyone as a life insurance beneficiary or caregiver. However, the military does not recognize gay marriage because the Defense of Marriage Act is federal law. Thanks to a $690,000 grant from the state, Robert Morris is committed to providing quality education to veterans and in the process has increased the number of veterans on campus by almost 20%. Support for veterans has increased drastically on campus with the opening of the Veteran Education and Training Services Center and the addition of hiring counselors as well as iPads for every veteran on campus. RMU is doing its part to commemorate the 150th anniversary of Italy's unification in the next few weeks. Students of all backgrounds enjoyed a presentation by visiting Rooney scholar Luca Guardobasio earlier today. Mr. Guardobasio is a filmmaker, director, writer, and actor with a wealth of knowledge dealing with Italian cinema and is just one of many Rooney scholars set for this upcoming year. 
The festivities continue tomorrow with an Italian picnic and bocce tournament on the lawn in front of Nicholson Center. The fun starts at 5 p.m. and all interested students are invited to attend. Somewhere in between excitement and fear lies the beginning of a Walmart right here in Moon Township. The proposed location is the vacant plaza that houses the Meadow Racing. Emotions range from joy to worry over the new superstore, and the big concern is the increase in traffic. This issue is so contested that Walmart has to work with PennDOT to create new and safe traffic patterns, including widened roads and more signals and signs. The Superstore will bring approximately 600 drops to the area, so hopefully they get this done. Property reassessment figures are being delayed for many regions of northern and western Allegheny County, bringing about an uproar from citizens. Neighborhoods like Millvale, Fox Chapel, McKees Rocks, Shaler, and Moon are feeling the effects of the delay, which is making budget planning nearly impossible. The delay is said to last well into 2012 and could very well add up to thousands of dollars in borrowing costs for the municipalities and school districts in question. Walking around campus, it's hard not to see someone using a smartphone, and there are more apps out there than anyone can keep track of. They have to be created by somebody, and that's a good thing for the economy. Allison Kosick has the details. Farmville, Angry Birds, Words with Friends, they're all popular apps and they're all helping to create a sector that's giving a big boost to the labor market. A study from the University of Maryland's School of Business is calling it the Facebook app economy and more than 180,000 jobs have been created because of how popular Facebook has become. According to the study's economic model, the app economy is putting more than $12 billion in benefits and wages in the pockets of American workers. The study focused on apps built for mobile devices, tablets, and Facebook, but it says the majority of the job creators came from apps that can span across all three platforms, such as Words with Friends, a Scrabble-like game that users play one-on-one. -on -one. These developers and their companies are at the forefront of the job creation. And these are high-paying gigs. The average salary at an IT startup is about $64,000. Compare that to the national average of $40,000. Plus, if you factor in all the business that apps direct towards retailers, online services, and other apps, researchers say this economic lift could last a long time. I'm Allison Kosick in New York. On Monday, the FBI released their 2010 report on crime in the U.S. The report reveals that crime across the country has dropped about 6%. In Pittsburgh alone, there were 300 less violent crimes, which is about 9% of the crimes in the city. This is the fourth straight year that the number of crimes in Pittsburgh has gone down. Up next on RMU Live. Could we once again be, the, be under the threat of a government shutdown? Also, a former WE, WWE executive in the Senate. It could happen. And Vinny Ruggieri has the weather forecast. Stay tuned. Nicaragua is a completely different world. We were there to bring nursing care to some desperate people. At Robert Morris University, every student is expected to reach out to others. The very first person that I met was David. He kept saying, you have to come to my house and watch me play my trumpet. You could tell from the look on his face that it was just his most prized possession. I get back home, a few weeks later I got a message that a gang had broken into his house at night and they stole it, which was his life. So next trip back, we gave him a new one. The look on his face was just complete disbelief. He just absolutely couldn't believe it. And to be able to do something like that is one of the best moments of my life. He said he'd never forget us. Change someone's life. It changes yours forever. Robert Morris University. The Senate's top Democrat is warning of a possible government shutdown, despite some Republican claims to the contrary. Congress has to pass a funding bill to keep the government running after September 30th. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says Republicans aren't keeping their word on funding the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Reid says that could grind the government to a total halt. I heard uh, the reports that Senator uh, McConnell said there will be no shutdown. I am not that sure. I'm not that sure because the Tea Party driven House of Representatives has been so unreasonable in the past, I don't know why they should suddenly be reasonable. So um, all the um, 
polling done has shown that the American people are really tired of what has gone on with the Tea Party folks driving the message from the House. And uh, I'm not as certain as um, McConnell because we're not going to cave in on this because it's a matter of principle. Not only do they uh, give us inadequate funding, but to rub salt in the wound, they take a program that creates jobs to pay for the first year. Republicans insist that any money for disaster relief must be offset by cuts in the stopgap funding bill. This House is scheduled to take up the measure on Wednesday. Former professional wrestling executive Linda McMahon is getting back in the ring. Not the wrestling ring, but the political one. McMahon announced that she is making a second run to represent Connecticut in the U.S. Senate. This time the Republican is going after the seat that opens when Joseph Lieberman retires next year. I am a proven job creator, and today I am announcing that I am a candidate for the United States Senate. And the chairman of World Wrestling Entertainment, Linda McMahon served as president and CEO of WWE until 2009. She spent tens of millions of dollars in a failed bid for the other Connecticut Senate seat last year. Vice President Joe Biden was in Chicago today, drumming up support and money for President Obama. Biden posed for pictures with supporters following a dinner event at the home of Chopper Trading CEO Raj Fernando. Tickets for the dinner reportedly started at about $10,000. Earlier, Biden hosted a reception at the downtown Sheridan. Tickets to that event were $500 a plate. Mm. Two American hikers jailed in Iran are finally free after more than two years behind bars. A U.S. official says the pair was released today on bail. Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal were convicted last month of entering Iran illegally and spying for the U.S. They were sentenced to eight years in prison. You'll remember the two men were arrested in July 2009 after they say they mistakenly crossed into Iran. A third hiker was also arrested that day, but she was later released for medical reasons. Leaders of Libya's new interim government say they're working towards stability. They spoke today at the UN headquarters in New York about forming a more permanent government to replace Moar Gadif's regime. I think we better have a good consultation. We better talk before we act. I think this government, when formed, will help tremendously to bring about stability and order in Tripoli and the rest of the country. Therefore, I, I'm not bothered by, by the time we are consuming, you know, to, to bring about some sort of national consensus behind this government. You know. I expect the government to be announced within a week, 10 days maximum from now. You know. uh, most of the work has been done. It's a question of uh, uh, the number of ministries included. Uh, the location of those ministers, are they going to be all in Tripoli or they're going to be <laughs> divided between East and West, you know, that's a possibility. Fighters from the new interim government has yet to capture Gaddafi. They advanced toward a city southwest of Tripoli today where Gaddafi and his allies were thought to be hiding out. Today's opening session of the United Nations General Assembly is set to become a battle over Palestinian statehood. Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas entered or arrived at the UN this morning with a bold and problematic goal in mind. Abbas is expected to press for full Palestinian membership to the UN, but the United States and others are putting pressure on the Palestinians to drop their bid. The fear is that granting the Palestinians request could kill the idea of resuming peace talks with the Israelis. President Obama is expected to make his case privately to Abbas in a meeting later this evening. Well, uh, the political climate up there in New York, slightly hot, but down here much more temperate. Oh, well, you know, I mean, it's been a, been a great week. There's no rain. Uh, I got a little tanning in this week, which is good. Love doing that. Um, and I'm ready to hear what's up next week, you know, short shorts or parkas. Benny Ruggieri has the answer. Thanks, guys. You take a look at your current weather. You have a high of a 75, humidity at 62 degrees, wind chill 7 miles per hour, uh, dew point 61. And take a look at our almanac for today. Average high of 79, average low of 61. Record high for today was 93 back in 1895. 
Um, today's sunrise at 707 to sunset 720 p.m. Um, your local map, Butler's at 63, Pittsburgh's at a 73, um, Robinson 69, Washington 76 degrees, Indiana over my shoulder is 71, uh, Greensburg's uh, 64. And I'll take a look at uh, other map, Erie. 75 degrees, Cleveland also 75 degrees, Morgantown down 75, and today's forecast to be a high of 79, partly cloudy, thunderstorm. Sorry to say it wasn't raining, but there will be a storm coming in around 3 o'clock. And for tomorrow, it will be a high of 75, a morning shower, and partly sunny. Probably a chance of a thunderstorm tomorrow as well. And you take a look at your five-day forecast. As I said, today and tomorrow is thunderstorm, high of 79, low of 61, high of 75, low of 56. And Friday, high of 65, low of 52, and expect thunderstorms throughout the day. We have stuff rolling in in the morning, the afternoon, and the night. So it's going to be off and on, but it's just going to continue to rain. And Saturday is also is going to rain and high. 67 and Sunday is 63 and there's your five-day forecast. A thunderstorm is going to ruin the bocce tournament. It is going to be a wet week out there. Absolutely. Oh, goodness gracious. Now what I'm curious about is, you know, is it going to be, what I get curious about with the heat and the humidity, do you wear your full parka? Do you just do the trench coat and the hat? You know, Mad Men, what do you, what do, you do? I'm not sure. That's, that's something that I feel I'm not in I'm inclined to answer. Are you sure? I'm not an expert. You're I don't a think. Stylish but guy. Uh, somebody who is, thank you. But somebody who is an expert on sports and especially hockey, which starts up, is Brooks Bratton. Here he is. Thanks, guys. Coming up in sports, the Penguins hit the ice tonight, and the Bucks take on the Diamondbacks. All that and more after the break. Her final exam started ten minutes ago. She'll wake up hungover and won't remember what happened last night. Extreme behaviors have extreme costs. For the first time since Game 7 of the opening round of last year's Stanley Cup playoffs, the Pittsburgh Penguins will take to the ice against another squad. The Pens open their preseason schedule tonight, facing off against the Detroit Red Wings at the Consult Energy Center. Puck drop is set for 7 p.m. and the game can be seen on Route Sports Pittsburgh. Now, Captain Sidney Crosby continues to take part in non-contact training camp practices. The All-Star Center says that he has not experienced any symptoms over the weekend stemming from his concussion suffered back in January. Now, there's still no timetable as to when Crosby will be cleared for contact. And tonight marks the first of six preseason games for the Penguins. They'll host Chicago tomorrow night, Minnesota on Saturday, before hitting the road next week. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are simply playing for pride at this point in the season. With only a week remaining in the 2011 campaign, the Bucks will finish their 19th straight losing season. But there are still a few games to be played, including last night in Arizona to take on the Diamondbacks. And that's where we will head for the highlights as we take a look at the Pirates and D-backs from Chase Field in Phoenix. Already 1-0 Buccos when Pedro Alvarez gets a hold of a bomb deep to right. And gone a solo shot. Pittsburgh takes a 2-0 lead. And now Alvarez, he'll get it done in the field as well. A quick liner to third base, diving to his right, gets up a strong throw on to Derek Lee to get the third out of the inning. Pirates still lead 2-0 at the bottom of two. Top five now. Ryan Domic gets a hold of one with runners on first and second. Andrew McCutcheon scoring from second. That's no problem for the speedster. 3-0 Pittsburgh. And we move on to the eighth where it's 3-1. Derek Lee with a home run deep to left center, a two-run shot. That'll do it for your final score. 5-3. Pirates win. Pirates win. Mm, and they started. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Brooks. Brooks. Uh, luckily, it's hockey season. We, <laughs> and they started out so hot, too. Right. Well, 
God, what are you going to do? Thank you guys. <laughs> this is it. Bye. See you guys later. <laughs>